section tonight, then we're going to look at uh, the Gospels, and uh, if you look at the structure of the Bible, you'll find that they're the first four books in the New Testament. We have the Gospel records as recorded by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John, and uh, essentially what they do is they uh, reveal to us, in the way that they recorded, different aspects of the character of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, they're split into two groups really. There's the first three written by Matthew, Mark and Luke which are called the Synoptic Gospels which cover uh, the same events but from the perspective of these three particular writers who were eyewitnesses of Jesus at the time uh, all of course under the uh, influence and uh, control of the Holy Spirit and then after that slightly differently we have John's Gospel. Um, so we have these, these four Gospel records each one of them uh, focusing on and revealing to us in a bit more uh, detail specific aspects of Jesus' character and life during his ministry years. What we're going to do though is just go back into the Old Testament because if you go back into uh, the Old Testament into Ezekiel, so if you just go into the Old Testament and uh, just past the Psalms, uh, you get to the, all the prophets, um, Ezekiel, Daniel, so forth. So if you go to Ezekiel, um, in the Bibles we're using on page 756, we have here uh, some words of the prophet Ezekiel and just to put it in context uh, this is much earlier, this is 600 years before Christ, 600 BC this is God's message to the uh, prophet Ezekiel giving, them, uh, giving him a message to give to the faithful ones uh, who were exiled at this time so the whole nation of Israel had been taken away into captivity in Babylon but uh, God has given this vision to Ezekiel uh, of uh, a future glori glorious, uh, glorified and restored Israel and this was there to uh, inspire and to infuse and to strengthen the faith of those who still believed even though they were in exile at this time. So let's look at um, Ezekiel chapter 1 and look at verses 5 and 6. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man and every one had four faces, and every one had four wings. Go down to verse 10. As for the likeness of their faces, they, they four had the face of a man, and the face of a lion on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side, they four also had the face of an eagle. So there's Ezekiel, he has this vision given to him by God, this wonderful picture uh, in symbolic language detailing uh, things to do with Israel in the future being fully restored and we have in that 10th verse there these four faces a man, a lion, an ox and an eagle okay so if we go to verse 28 of uh, chapter 1 of Ezekiel verse 28 says as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. And chapter 2 goes on to say, well, that voice speaks. So we have this glorious, bright image. Uh, we have the bow in the cloud. In the day of rain, so that's a thing of a rainbow, that uh, symbol that God gave after he judged the world via the flood to Noah and his, uh, his sons and their wives, uh, that he, uh, the promise that he wouldn't flood the earth again. But it's uh, the bow in the sky is, is all the colours together uh, in one uh, symbol. And so there's a, a unifying sort of coming together of all these colours in the, in the rainbow. And so in this vision that uh, Ezekiel had, we have these four faces all illustrating and indicating for us four aspects of something glorious in the future to come. So this was uh, the, uh, the world of the Lord Jesus at uh, the time of uh, his ministry years. Um, this was the Roman Empire um, at its uh, time around uh, 2,000 years ago. And you can see the old names there for the, the countries of uh, Southern Europe. But anyway, the, uh, this image these um, pictures, these images in this vision that uh, Ezekiel was recording were talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's this fourfold view of the Lord Jesus Christ and each of the Gospels relates to uh, 
one of these images, one of these uh, creatures in chapter 1 of Ezekiel. So you have uh, the lion, uh, which, which relates to the work um, that Matthew did when he recorded his gospel. So when you think about a lion, what does the lion symbolize? So we have this symbol of the lion, this picture of the lion for us in Ezekiel, and if you think about what a lion is and what it represents, well, the lion is, of course, uh, referred to as the king of beasts or the king of the jungle, uh, and you often find the lion used in heraldry for uh, nations, so it's on coinage or flags, things like that, and it's a symbol of strength and of power. And this idea of kingship is represented by uh, the lion, and in Matthew's Gospel, there's great emphasis on the kingly qualities of the character of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the second symbol is that of the ox. Well, what's an ox when you think about it? It's a large, uh, powerful beast used for strength. In ancient times, it was used to pull a cart uh, and could do so all day long, no trouble, carry heavy loads. And so Mark's Gospel emphasizes the work of the ox, which is service, which is uh, a servant. So you have emphasis in that gospel of the servant work that Jesus did. He was a servant to uh, the disciples, you know, he washed their feet, he, he made himself like a servant to them, uh, something that no, most people wouldn't dare to do because if you were a servant you were the lowest of the low in society. But uh, Jesus was quite prepared to wash the feet of his um, disciples, so that's an em a point which emphasizes his work as a servant. The third symbol uh, is the symbol uh, of the, a man, and uh, in Luke's Gospel, which emphasizes this characteristic of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have uh, the reference to this symbol of the man, and he's often described as the Son of Man. So he was a human, uh, like we are. Uh, he lived a life, that, so he therefore understands the life that we have, the temptations, the difficulties that we have. So he understands what it's like to be like us because he was born of a human mother, even though his father was God himself. So this aspect is emphasized in Luke's Gospel. And then finally, uh, John's Gospel uh, is connected to the uh, sign of the eagle. And if you think about what an eagle is, again, you find an eagle uh, in certain um, uh, heraldry, and it's symbolic with certain nations. But what is an eagle? It's something which flies up high towards the heavens, and it's known for its sight. Uh, remarkable sight that can uh, spot them moving on the ground from a great uh, from a great distance away. So, in John's Gospel, we have uh, the lofty sort of Son of God, uh, godly higher sort of uh, characteristics of the Lord Jesus Christ, and his spiritual sight, uh, his words which were accurate in their assessment and judgment spiritually of things that he saw and spoke about. So, these four symbols uh, really give us this fourfold view of. The Lord Jesus Christ in his character and in the work that he did as recorded through these um, four Gospels. Now uh, obviously the image that we have recorded for Ezekiel is speaking of a future time for a restored and glorified Israel which other prophecies indicate for us uh, will also include the Lord Jesus Christ returning back to the earth again sitting on the throne of his forefather David uh, and the perfection of the character of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be expanded throughout the whole world because the, the kingdom of God is going to be uh, a, a, not only a restoration of Israel but uh, a perfection and a, 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 a reversal of the way the world is from what it is today to what it was in the beginning. So in the beginning it was made perfect and God is going to restore it to perfection. Uh, he's going to remove all the sin from the world and all the wickedness that men do and restore the whole world to this perfect state. And uh, for a bit more detail about the four Gospels, if you go to page 73 in your workbooks, there's a good breakdown of each of those four Gospels. Uh, there are uh, information there about uh, the time it was written, a quick summary of what goes on in each of the Gospels, the emphasis uh, of each Gospel as related to these four faces, these four symbols that we have in Ezekiel chapter 1 and also some uh, verses and references which point to things that are uh, underlying and, and related to some of the themes that you have in the scriptures and some of the key events in each of those gospels. So that's there for you on page 73. So briefly then, that's uh, a quick run through uh, what the gospels emphasize and why we have the four of them. And as we said, that's the uh, map of the world as it was in the time when these were penned and when Christ was alive.
and I'll now hand back over to Ben.